I realize I set up my microphone and I've not been recording from that at all. Oops. Hi, Watson. Mark, Watson, don't mark the camera. <laughs> okay. Hello, lovely readers. My name is Marlena Frank and I'm a YA fantasy and horror author. And today I'm here with QQ. <laughs> And Zoe's looking out the window right now. Watson's here too, he's just on the floor. So the last few weeks, I've been doing quite a bit of tutorial videos for Scrivener because, well, I, I wanted to go ahead and finish that series out, um, get that whole playlist ready for folks who just want to go through video by video. Um, and I went ahead and did that, and that is now live and finished. If you want to watch it, it's in my Scrivener tutorial playlist. I wanted to do something a little different for this week. This idea came to me earlier this week when a friend of mine posted a rather dark poem by Robert Frost and talked about how it was probably the darkest poem that they'd ever read by him. This week I wanted to tell a story because I've never done that on this channel and I thought that would be kind of fun to share with you an experience that I've had. So let me go ahead and explain. Uh, let me set, let me set the, uh, the, the the image here for you. <laughs> so this was back when I was 10 years old and I was in the fifth grade. Now I had transferred from my elementary school that I had been used to to doing this elementary school which was just for a single grade level and then I was going to be heading off to junior high after that at another school. So I was kind of having to get used to knowing a lot of people. It was kind of a rough year for me in a lot of ways. I struggled with that a lot. And one of the things that was nice about it was that my mom was also a pair pro over there too. She was slowly working her way up in the, the ec echelons of teaching. <laughs> She's retired now, by the way. But one of the things that she found out and she really thought that I would be interested in was a poetry recital and I was like oh man this sounds fun yeah you see where this is going <laughs> and I was picking out a poem and I was rehearsing it because it was a stand-up st you were gonna be on stage walking around doing the recital and I practiced it but my mom was like mm, we have to do something for you because if you're gonna be up on stage reciting a poem you might want to look at speech therapy now I didn't grow up in anywhere special. I was born in Tennessee and grew up in Georgia, but for some reason I had a bit of a, like a, what, what they called it a North Carolina as, accent, um, um, kind of a British accent, um, which was kind of strange. They, they didn't know where I picked that up from. So <laughs> I would have classmates that would come up to me after class and be like, hey, Marlena, can you say Rose? And I'd be like, Rose, yeah. And they'd just kind of giggle and I'd be like, oh gosh, this, this kind of teasing. So words like Rose were hard for me. Rural is still hard for me. <laughs> Those R sounds are really difficult. And if anyone's watching who is an ESL, uh, English, English is a second language, you know, you, you guys, you guys get it. Uh, <laughs> but the R sound, was really hard for me and so I had to go to speech therapy and I was a little embarrassed about this because I didn't think, you know, I sounded weird. I didn't think my, you know, R's sounded bad or anything. And it wasn't my mom's idea to do it. I believe it was the other teachers because I was, uh, I think I won a contest, I forget. But basically they were like, if you're gonna be representing our school, you need to go to speech therapy which is all kinds of weird now that I look back at it, uh, but this was early 90s, so yeah, in the South. <laughs> but, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go to speech therapy, and I went and I had to practice my R's, and I had to learn how to say them slowly so that I could actually pronounce them properly, and it was really hard, you guys, for me as a, as a 10-year-old to, to focus on speaking and to focus on pronunciation like that. I had never really done that before. Um, so I went through that whole process and then I got up on stage and it was a, so we had those, those kind of wooden clapper chairs 
that were uh, at that at that school. I forget what school we went to. I've gone. I've been to so many like elementary schools in my life, <laughs> but they um, they had those little wood clapper chairs, and it was like a big section in the middle, one on the side, one on the side. So this was kind of like a theater um, area, and I was you know. I was a scrawny little 10 year old, <laughs> very short, <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh, what, what, there's, there's, this is bigger than I thought it was going to be. And yeah, there weren't a ton of people there, it was a poetry recital, but still I was like, oh no. <laughs> but um, I got up on stage and I acted out all of the parts for the poem, and it was a lot of fun for me and scary. I was trying so hard to look calm and relaxed, and my heart's like, oh golly! <laughs> but uh, I, I, I got through it, and I was my mom was really proud of me. Um, I think my dad was there too, and um, they they were so proud of me for for getting through it. And I didn't win anything. <laughs> all, all that work. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get honorable mention. I didn't get anything. So, but it was it was a lot of it was like a very unique experience. It made me think about how I speak more. It made me think about how to pronunciate more and how to take my time with speaking. Even still, I get a little dyslexic sometimes with my words. Sometimes I'll say things out of order, or I'll you know, you know, have problems like that. But basically. It taught me to be aware of, you know, not only my actions on the stage, but also being aware of my voice and speaking, things of that nature. Um, looking back on it now, it was, you know, probably very useful for me because, you know, I am here doing YouTube videos now. <laughs> I'm getting ready to do a uh, kind of mini book tour. You know, I, I'm doing a lot of different things where I'm interacting with people one on one and being able to be aware of your voice and how you sound and taking the time to say what you mean, taking the time to present like that, that's really hard to do and, you know, it takes practice and time, um, I think, but that was the first time I'd really had to think about that as a kid. I was like, oh man, this is a whole thing. <laughs> so I thought today it would be great. I recently got this beautiful uh, Robert Frost illustrated edition in hardback at Barnes & Noble. It was on sale and I was like, oh man, I really would like to have his collection of poems because this is, this is really cool. And I thought I would read this poem aloud and then I'll go find the other poem that I was told about that is such a dark poem, but I really love that one too. So I thought I would read a couple of pieces from Robert Frost today to you so you can experience you know, everyone's, everyone knows about the, uh, the path. I, I came across a path, in the, uh, two paths in the woods, and I, uh, um, I, I, I followed the one less traveled, and that's made all the difference, you know. Everyone knows about that one. This one, though, I haven't had to look at in a long time. <laughs> I think I pulled it out once a few years back just to be like, oh, yeah, they run away. But, yeah, so this is The Runaway by Robert Frost, and I'm going to go ahead and read it aloud to you. She's so cute. <laughs> the Runaway by Robert Frost Once, when the snow of the year was beginning to fall, we stopped by a mountain pasture to say, Who's Colt? A little Morgan had one forefoot on the wall, the other curled at his breast. He dipped his head and snorted at us, and then he had to bolt. We heard the miniature thunder where he fled, and we saw him, or thought we saw him, dim and gray, like a shadow against the curtain of falling flakes. I think the little fellow's afraid of the snow. He isn't winter broken. It isn't play with the little fellow at all. He's running away. I doubt if even his mother could tell him, sakes, it's only weather. He'd think she didn't know. Where is his mother? He can't be out alone. And now he comes again with a clatter of stone and mounts the wall again with whited eyes and all his tail that isn't hair up straight. He shudders his coat as if to throw off flies. Whoever it is that leaves him out so late, when other creatures have gone to stall and bin, 
ought to be told to come and take him in. I really liked that one as a kid. I was a big animal lover. <laughs> and I love the visuals in that. It, it's so pretty. So I thought I would also read, let me see here. I'll probably recognize the name when I see it. I found the poem. <laughs> I'm lame. <laughs> Okay, so this is called Out Out by Robert Frost. And that was the poem that made me actually pick up this uh, collection of stories from him. I had never read it before and I was pleased to see that he had some darker pieces like this one. This is probably the darkest I've read of his. Out Out by Robert Frost. The buzzsaw snarled and rattled in the yard and made dust and dropped stove length sticks of wood sweet-scented stuff when the breeze drew across it, and from there those that lifted eyes could count five mountain ranges, one behind the other, under the sunset far into Vermont. And the saw snarled and rattled, snarled and rattled, and it ran light, or had to bear a load, and nothing happened. Day was all but done. Call it a day. I wish they might have said to please the boy by giving him the half hour that a boy counts so much when saved from work. His sister stood beside them in her apron to tell them supper. At the word, the saw, as if to prove saws knew what supper meant, leaped out at the boy's hand or seemed to leap. He must have given the hand. However it was, neither refused the meeting, but the hand. The boy's first outcry was a rueful laugh as he swung toward them, holding up the hand, half an appeal, but half as if to keep the life from spilling. Then the boy saw all. Since he was old enough to know, big boy doing a man's work, though a child at heart, he saw all spoiled. Don't let him cut my hand off, the doctor when he comes. Don't let him, sister. So, but the hand was gone already. The doctor put him in the dark of ether. He lay and puffed his lips out with his breath. And then the watcher at his pulse took fright. No one believed. They listened at his heart. Little, less, nothing. And that ended it. No more to build on there. And they, since they were not the one dead, turned to their affairs. Pretty dark piece from Robert Frost. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, hi. Hi there, dark, dark storyline. <laughs> so this is it for this video this week. Next week I'm going to be going through my mini author tour going on for the rest of the year. We're pretty book solid all the way up until November. Huh, holiday season hits after that, so you know. <laughs> if you've liked this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Every follow, every comment, every like helps, and I really appreciate all of you. I hope you'll come back next week. I post new videos every Friday. <laughs> My little cute companion. <laughs> See you all next week.